Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. I'm very excited again about this new episode and today we're going to look at Bull 80. Um, a quick heads up, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's a request response application layer protocol that gives users a way to interact with web resources such as HTML files by transmitting hypertext messages between clients and servers. Uh, the communication between HTTP clients and servers is based on something called a three-way handshake, so I won't go into it in this tutorial. So we know that port 80 is open on a metasploitable machine, which in itself is not bad practice, because servers that are meant for general web use should offer both HTTP on port 80 and HTTPS on port 443. We also know that it's running Apache, a web server, I'm using the word, loosely here. So let's type in the IP address of Metasploitable 2 in a browser and see what's been hosted. So let's bring up a, a browser here and open a new tab and type in the IP address of Metasploitable 2, which is there. So um, we can actually see that we have a website with very few links to vulnerable web services, which I won't cover in this video really. So, um, we also have um, a, a username and password in clear text, which is not really good actually. And um, if you browse into Mutilide application, uh, one of the manual check I carry out is the path to the robots.txt. And let's do that. And this page contains directories that are supposed to be private. I mean, you can see all sorts of things which have been selected, I mean, the password, the config, the link, and so on. So um, let's, for the sake of argument, just browse to those pages which we're not allowed to. Okay. And surprise, surprise, we've got, you know, a text file with uh, very juicy information in it. Uh, Robot.txt is a text file webmaster creates um, to instruct search engine robots how to crawl pages on a website using crawl instructions such as um, specify how you can see this allowed. That's the sort of thing that uh, instructing user agents to, um, uh, to, 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 to pay attention to. You don't have to stick to it as a pen tester. Additionally, uh, there's an information disclosure uh, vulnerability. Um, a PHP information disclosure page can be found at uh, the following address. So if we browse to a Metasploit um, IP address and browse to the following path, info, then uh, we can actually see a, a disclosure page, which in essentially, essentially is a vulnerability that provides internal system information, a service version information, that can be used to look up vulnerabilities. For example, here, um, you can actually note that the version of PHP is 5.2.4 slash, uh, slash two, so um, that's the range. And it does suggest that uh, it's possible that the system is vulnerable to vulnerability, which affected PHP, say for example, before version 5.3 and 5.4. And you can find them um, on a common vulnerability and exposure website, which uh, you know you can just look it up. Um, PCV. Uh, this is where Google is your friend, isn't it? Really. So, and uh, you go to the the search list, and basically you just type in PHP five point four point two, and then what comes up there. Uh, not many, so you can actually see the vulnerability to which um, our application could be vulnerable to. And you can sort of dig into one of the recorded vulnerability and uh, it gives you the, the reference and, and the description. Um, now let's see if we can exploit uh, the vulnerability uh, discovered in the, in the exposure. Uh, website and find out what a friend Metasploits can do for us. Um, let's bring up the terminal first and um, um, let's, we might have to double check the version of our application and we're going to do this by using uh, an auxiliary module in Metasploits 
um, the first thing to do is to make sure that our PostgreSQL database it's it's up and running. So control R service. I've got it running, so I'm just gonna check the status state to confirm that's the case. And then launch MSF console to get um Metasploit started. Um it shouldn't take long. Got got we've got a running. So um we're gonna be using the following auxiliary module. Um, it does check um, or confirms in this case the version of our application. Um, let's see the options. It's configuring in order to find out. We're not going to use a proxy chain for this tutorial. We're going to set the IP address of our vulnerable machine as a remote host. And uh, once we've done that, we can just run it. And there we go. It just confirms that um, we, uh, we're using an Apache. 2.2.8 version uh, as well as um, uh, running PHP 5.2.4. So it's information we had before, which is confirm it for um, using this particular tool. Now let's look for ready made exploit um, by bringing up another terminal here. If you just go to enter a command called search exploit, um, call it there already. And this particular command search exploit from um, a website called exploitdb.com. It's a repository for exploits and proof of concepts. It's maintained by offensive security. It's a bit overwhelming the first time you use it, but you get used to it. So we um, we target Apache and we search for Apache 2.2.8 and then we target um, PHP. And let's see what we've got here. So you can actually see it's very, very precise in the search. So what we've got is um, it's two exploits. The first one it has a C extension and the second one is a Python file. Um, I think the first one is the one we're after, uh, if you remember the details in a PHP um, info file. And if we go back to Metasploit and search for CGI using the grep command, grep. right, so um, you just search for a version of PHP. There you are. So the particular exploit, it's um, it's, it's one which uh, we might have to proceed with. So we can just use it and uh, configure it. Let's find out what the options are for configuration. Okay, so um, it's it's a metaprater. But this CGI exploit essentially is meant to return or create a metaprater, which is interactive shell from which we can actually explore a target machine and execute code. So um, you can actually see that some of the options have already been um, correctly set for us. So um, we're gonna configure the IP address of our target machine. So we've done that and um, essentially that's the only thing that needs um, changing it, we, we don't need a virtual host or perhaps a proxy chain. So we just run it. There you go. So we've got a Metaprete shell and um, the, I quite frankly, we can actually um, control um, the remote machine from our, um, from our own machine. You can actually find out information about system info here. And um, yeah, so it confirms that um, we, we have access to, of, um, to the to the to the remote machine in, in this particular case the, the, the vulnerable machine. You can also run command search as print working directory. So um, that's the it, it gives you the, the the level of privileges at which you you compromise the machine. So who am I? I don't think it works actually for this one. Um, you can get the get UID. Yes, get your ID confirms the the privilege that you happen to to have. So if you remember, if you recall our uh, user enumeration phase, this was one of the user accounts um, that were built into the system. But you might have to look back one of those videos to to know what I'm talking about. So we managed to remotely access the Metasploitable 2 machine. 
And this tutorial is done. Thanks for watching and see you next time.